Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! In the last episode, we finished uh, the Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro with a really big bag in the trial, at least. But, no, not at least, it was a bang all around. But now we are about to start episode 5, which is the Adventure of the Unspeakable Story, The Heart of Baskerville. Hmm, let's see what this has in stock for us and get started right away. Of course, from the opening. It's coming! Jones's cry peers through the thick wall of fog around us. Wisps of vapor flowed over the pistols I cocked it, and I waited breathlessly in the stillness. The silence lasted for what seemed an eternity, until, at last, it appeared. From the shadows of the cloud, an enormous beast sprang out upon us. A hound it was, but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a smoldering glare. The whole of its ox-sized body was outlined in white-hot flames. Its rumbling pant and hideous howl so terrified was I that I began to tremble with fear. Look well, Wilson, Sholmes declared, gazing upon the mystical beast. For this, this is the diabolical hound of the Baskervilles. Our first two months in London passed by in a flash. In that dis uh, disconcerting courtroom experience we were first thrown into on the day we arrived in the country. And in soseki sans terrible ordeal that had followed closely behind, we had emerged victorious. However, there then came an abrupt end to our opportunities to appear in court. Which was hardly surprising, of course, since I was nothing more than an amateur, an unknown student of law from a faraway land. So life in our little office was very quiet. That is, until it was shattered one day by that fateful telegram. Fifteenth April, nine thirteen AM, Naruhodo's legal consultancy. That morning, I was woken by the unreversed knocking on the door by the telegram boy. But after he'd gone, Susatu san's behavior became very obviously strange. Um, Susato-san? Yes? Is it time to leave for court already? Let me see, what case is it today? I don't think I'm scheduled to defend anyone at the moment. Uh, sorry, I don't think I'm scheduled to defend anyone at the moment, am I? Oh, no, of course not. How silly of me. But I think Iris said she would make us breakfast this morning. So shall we go, uh, go down to Mr. Sholmes' suite? Yes. Iris makes the most delicious breakfast food. She does, doesn't she? And once our bellies are full, we can leave for court in fighting fit form. Let me see. What case is it today? Here we go again. Well, apparently we can converse with her, but I am going to examine our office for the very first time. That spade has been in here since we started renting the place. Oh, that's not a spade, Maruro san. It's a shovel. <laughs> oh, that's a great reference to this letter step letter uh, conversation between Phoenix and Maya. Oh, that's great. No shovels are for digging, that's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. 
No, spades are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a shovel. I don't want to dig a hole for myself, so let's leave it. So that must be a reference to the older Ace Attorney games, to the trilogy. Because there's a ladder. And that would be way more, but... What's the difference between a spade and a shovel and stuff? That, that, that seems like a reference to Ace Attorney. Not great Ace Attorney, but Ace Attorney. It's spring at last and the weather is warmer now. But I love the smell of the fire and the steam rising from the kettle. Oh, would you like some tea, Naruto-san? Thank you, Susato-san, but I'm alright for now. With the green tea Susato-san makes me from time to time and Iris' unique herbal infusions, this place is paradise for a true tea lover. Green tea is such a wonderful accompaniment. A companion. A, a companionment? A companionment to British tea cakes, don't you think? Well, I would think so. So, what is this? So, this is the tea set that Susato san brought with her from Japan. Ah, true. Let's hope she hasn't noticed me slipping sugar and milk into my cup when she makes it. It's just so bitter. Tea is a drink to be enjoyed, Naruto san. You really don't have to force yourself to drink it, you know. I don't like to see you screw up your face, so... Well, well, well. She knows. Those are the books, apparently. We've only been here in London for about two months. But my desk is starting to look a little messy already. You could tidy up once in a while. So, Sato-san, I always say... Making a mess is a small sacrifice to pay for being able to further your studies. And time spent tidying up is time you can't devote to the same cause. And time spent on ridiculous arguments is time that could be better spent on some simple housework. She wins. But I'm supposed to be the lawyer here. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, the music's great. Once again, the music has been great for the whole series so far. Capcom does such a great job with the music in this game. Oh, this must be the telegram. Let's see. Oh, no, you mustn't look at that. Not under any circumstances. Oh, all right. I won't. I'm sorry, my little son, but you can be very mischievous at times. Then put the telegram away if you don't want people looking at it. Okay, so that's weird. She doesn't want us to look, but why? Hmm. What about this chase here? We were rather lucky to find that old aquarium left behind here. Ah, okay, so this thing aquarium. The prawns we put in there are doing rather well, and the anemones too. It's a wonderful invention, isn't it? The sea, behind glass, inside your room. Another example of Great Britain's greatness. Having to clean it out and change the water isn't so great though, is it? Yeah, that's a little bit of a downside to having an aquarium. It's a lot of work if you take it seriously. So that must be the bathroom? Do you know, I've never seen inside your room there, Susato-san. I've never even peeped inside. I, I should think so too. A young maiden's private chamber is a place of bittersweet secrets, you know? Whatever you say, young maiden. Alright, so we've checked everything out, it seems. I've investigated thoroughly. Oh, okay, I can't find anything out of place. Well... Yeah, we... I misclicked again. Sorry for that. But... There doesn't seem to be anything left. Okay. Then I guess I present the armband. It means a great deal to me, you know? That you cherish his armband so and wear it each time you appear in court. Well, it's very important to me. It's what shows that I'm a lawyer. And whenever I wear it, I feel as though it gives me strength through Kazuma. I absolutely can't be without it, especially when I'm a at a critical point in the trial. But just the other day I noticed you wearing it when we went to visit the park. Sometimes I forget to take it off. 
Well, well, well. So we still don't know about Kazuma's uh, mission here in Great Britain. That's also something we are going to find out because this is supposed to be the last adventure in the first game. Which means we are going to find out in this adventure what uh, Kazuma was supposed to do here. And we're going to take care of that. This is going to be a long adventure, I think. So let's not make it any longer than it already is and let's just start talking to Sasato-san. So what was it about? The telegram that was delivered this morning, I mean. Oh, a, a telegram? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, but you're not going to get away with that. Well, I didn't think I would. Actually, um... Don't give it a moment's thought. It's nothing. Nothing interesting. Boring, in fact. Um... It was just a boring old telegram. That's three times now that she's tried and failed to convince me it was nothing. I promise that I'll tell you about it at some point. Alright. I understand. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about Suseki-san, which I actually looked up, I have to be honest, and it seems that Suseki Nats uh, Natsume was a very famous writer, a very important writer for Japan in the Meiji era, uh, around the Victorian age, and he is, uh, just look it up for yourself if you want to, he, uh, he wrote, uh, for example, Kokoro, which is one of the most influential pieces of literature Japan ever conceived. So Suseki-san was actually a historic figure and we defended him. I mean, of course the uh, whole trial thing was made up. He never was on trial, but things pictured in the adventure of the clouded Kokoro uh, are actually very accurate. He was someone very secretive and lived by himself and uh, he hated Great Britain. He was in London and he hated it there. He want, didn't enroll in Cambridge and stuff. Just look it up yourself. It's very interesting to read about it. So let's talk about Suseki-san. I suppose Suseki-san will have a... Uh, Suseki-san, it was apparently by the way. Uh, will have arrived back in Japan by now, won't he? Yes, I should think so. He left immediately after the terrible ordeal. Which would mean he should have completed the voyage already, or be just a few days away. A fortnight ago, we had that very long telegram from him. Do you remember? Complaining of seasickness. But by and large, it seems the voyage has been going well. Is something wrong, Naruto san I was just wondering what might have become of Soseki-san had he stayed in London. That's all. You mean, as regards Lord Van Ziegs, the Reaper? Yes, I can't help wondering if seasickness would have paled into insignificance in that case. The Reaper. Let's talk about Van Ziegs. What is it they say that no one who stands in the dock can be saved from the Reaper? Right? Like the way that nightmarish trial ended on the very day we arrived in London. Even two months on, the cause of that dreadful fire is still a mystery. Yes, but at least so, Seki-san, is safely out of the country now. Presumably that means... That the curse of the Reaper can only take effect within the confines of the city of London, perhaps. Even if that's the case, it's little comfort. I have a terrible sense of foreboding. If the legend of the Reaper is to be believed, it would mean he wields the sword of justice himself. Come to think of it, I wonder what he's been up to these past two months. Surely not wielding that sword against more acquitted defendants. No, I don't think so. Apparently, Lord Van Ziegs hasn't appeared in court once since our last encounter. Oh. Yes, since Sosekisan's trial, 
He's withdrawn from judicial service again, it seems. Really? Just like before, when he wasn't seen in court at all for several years. So it's just been me who's had to face him in his recent spate of trials, then. Ah, just my luck. I wonder if luck doesn't come into it. Sorry? What was that? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Okay. So we talked about everything. That means we can finally move. Let's move to Sean's Sweet then. Fifteenth April. Sean's Sweet. Morning, Runo. Morning, Susie. Good morning, Iris. Um, Iris? What is it, Runo? What is that terrible noise? It sounds like a cat being strangled. Ah, oh, yes. You noticed that, did you? Hell, he isn't in the best form this morning, it seems. Hello. Hello, Mr. Shorts? Good, good, good morning? A good morning to die, perhaps. Has something happened, Mr. Shorts? You look miserable, and the way you were playing the violin before. <laughs> My analytical mind is dead. Music is dead. The world is dead. Damn this Blanchard existence! That's all it is, my dear fellow. Nothing of consequence. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, Iris, isn't it time we ate? Some dry toast and insipid coffee for me, if it's not too much trouble. Oh, kitty cat. Oh, look, it's Wagahai. Good morning, boy. That must be some sort of tiny door for cats to use. But how did it get there? Well then everyone, time for breakfast! Oh wonderful! Let me help you, Iris! Uh, it would indeed be a fine day to die. Uh, I knew something looked different. Something's missing from Mr. Sholmes' dick. Yes, his apparatus. Okay, before we start conversing, I am also going to... Examine thoroughly, of course. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Iris doing much writing recently. But there's paper already set up in the typewriter. Look, as if she's about to start. That reminds me, when I mentioned that Iris was in the process of writing a full-fledged novel, Mr. Natsume was most impressed. Ah, oh, yes, Mr. Natsume. That's what I'll be doing too, once I'm back in Japan, he said, throw tightly to clench fists and teeth. Uh-huh, okay. So nothing of too much interest. That's a charming little white shelf, and full of charming little bottles too. But the contents of them aren't quite as charming, it seems. Science is the future, Mr. Naruto. You can't deny it. I'm saving my money so that I can buy some chemistry apparatus as well. Law, chemistry, takedown throws. What diverse skills you boast, Mr. Sato. As useful as they are, I'm not sure that my throwing skills are worthy of inclusion in that list. Ah, I would tend to disagree. Let's have a look at the teapot. 
Iris' beautiful tea set is there on the table as usual. A cup of one of his special herbal blends always helps me to relax when I'm feeling the strain. The English past pastime of tea has many similarities with our own tea ceremony customs, don't you think? Isn't the idea of hospitality behind it? That's the essence of tea. Okay, so we checked out everything here, except for this. These are all mementos of Mr. Sholmes' past cases, I think. If he'd been involved in my case, I wonder if the beefsteak from the Carnival would be on display here. A mystery shoe, a curious hammer, some mysterious dancing men, a bust of Napoleon. Ah, oh, what an entrancing collection! It looks like an untidy assortment of junk to me, rather like what's on my own shelves. Well, you really ought to learn to keep your things in order, Mr. Naruto. No, no favoritism there at all. Alright, so we checked everything here. I'm not gonna check Iris out first. Let's check the shelf. But fire's burning comf uh, comfortingly in the grate again today. It's a very different feeling to Japanese hibachi somehow. Oh, look at the photographic print of a lady displayed on the mantelpiece. Could it be... Yes, it must be. It's the woman. Oh, how exciting. Is that supposed to mean something to me? The woman? I got an achievement for this. The woman? Question mark. I hope you can see. I'm not sure that you can, but I think you should. Nevertheless, I'm telling you anyway, so you know now. It looks like that huge metal chest is being used as a table for tea and coffee. It seems very sturdy, with an equally sturdy lock. Mr. Naruto, you mustn't go around opening things. It was... I always have to keep an eye on you, don't I? You're very mischievous. How did you come to that conclusion? Well, well, well. Good question. Okay, let's have a look at the globe. There's all sorts of these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. Oh, it's such a charmingly untidy collection of paraphernalia, perfer isn't it? It just looks messy to me, like my desk. But you, Mr. Naruto, must learn to tidy up after yourself. No favoritism there, then. Well, 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 okay. So... Maybe we can talk to Iris? We can, but we are not going to for the moment because I want to check out things first. Look at Mr. Sean's desk, it's completely clear. Isn't that enormous machine usually on it? That's true. We can never, can never hope to understand what goes on in the great, great detective's mind, Mr. Naruto. Why? Next we are invited, we may find he's located the entire suit. It's scary and pl plausible, actually. Yes, yes, yes. So, that's well, that's it, it seems. So we can talk about Vaga High with Iris. Or we can converse. We're gonna talk to Iris about Vaga High first, of course. So, let's talk about Vaga High. Mr. Natsume's cat seems to have settled into his new home then. Oh yes, and I've become very attached to little Waggy. Uh, it would appear his previous own is completely forgotten to him. Cats are unfeeling creatures. Their muse as empty as the hearts of the muses. If Mr. Natsume had no intention of taking Wagi back to Japan, I wonder why he kept him in the first place. I expect he would have taken him if he could, but pets are strictly forbidden aboard steamships in our experience. And for good reason. Terrible things can happen if the rules of passage are not obeyed. Well, I don't mind, because Wagi is so adorable. Yes, he indeed is. Yes, he <laughs> yes, he really is. Oh yes, what about the door? I don't remember seeing that tiny thing in the main door before. Where did that come from? Oh, you notice? You are so observant, Bruno. Look, I used this. It's my latest invention. What? 
What, what is that? I call it the cat flapper mat. Gosh, a machine for making doors just for cats. That's right, it can make a cat flap for a little furry friend in like a wagging seconds. And it can do it in any door at all, no matter what it's made of. It's very powerful, you see. Wouldn't it have been quicker just to make the cat flap, rather than making a machine to make the cat flap? Well, yes, maybe. But now I can make cat flaps any way I like. Oh, I think it's wonderful. You must make one for us in the door of our office upstairs, Iris. She really knows how to come up with unconventional inventions, this girl. <laughs> Alright, so we know she is someone to talk to if we need inventions. So I'm gonna present the armband to Shorms first. Mr. Shorms, could you ask for your opinion about this? You learn me. You learn me to raise my languid head with the promise of some mental exaltation. Yet in my morbid depression, I am confronted with the most mundane of problems. Oh. My mind finds greater stimulation in the unforgiving monotony of the floor than in your miserable offering. Always glad to help. Oh, my head weighs heavy on my shoulders. Okay, so he didn't react to that. Which means we are <laughs> wanting to die. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, let's just talk to him. Wanting to die. You seem to be very unhappy this morning, Mr. Shorts. What's happened? It used to be the case that in my hands, this violin sung like the dawn chorus. Its malison and tones would make flowers bloom. It would? But now, the muses are unamused with me. The goddesses of music have thrown me over. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Shorns? For hours I have bowed, for days even. Through the night I have endeavored to no avail. That sound, my tone, is lost. That brilliant, clear, unbearing tone, gone forever. No more recitals of unbridled emotion. Well, you haven't been practicing much lately, have you, Hurley? Don't worry. I'm sure it will come back to you in time. Oh, oh th th that was him. Sorry. Heed my words, Mr. Naruhogo. The goddesses of the arts are fickle. One day they bestow genius on a man. The next they unmercifully withdraw it. Oh, dear. Ah, oh, why is this happening to me? If they take the turn I have for the violin from me, what is left for pity's sake? What is left? Um, deduction, perhaps? Isn't that what you're known for? Let's talk about the missing machine, then. Mr. Shorns, I don't like to pry, but... Your desk looks rather empty today. Ah, well done, Miss Susato. Your observational skills do you credit. Oh no, Mr. Shorms, they pale into in insignificance when compared to yours. You'd struggle to not, not, not to notice, wouldn't you? You mean Hurley's great an analytoscope? That's a windy banks now. Sorry, it's at a Windy Bank? No, Windy Banks. The pawn brokery. Pawn? What? You mean you've pawned that enormous machine of yours? 
It has some considerable value, you see. Quite undeservingly. But isn't it a very important machine for your work? I do wish you had consulted us if your situation had become so desperate. I should have gladly passed what little income I have to you. Dear Madam, things are far from desperate. But, but the pawnbreaker has your wonderful machine. How can it be anything but desperate? Making use of a pawnbroker is quite ordinary here in London, I assure you. It is? It doesn't sound ordinary at all. It would seem that neither of you fully understand how pawnbroking works. Oh, what's to understand exactly? How pawnbroking works. Um, what did you mean when you said we didn't fully understand how pawnbroking works? To the people of London, pawnbrokery are akin to banks. Banks? On Mondays, merchants relinquish their finest jackets and trappings to their pawnbroker of choice. With the money they receive in return, they are able to trade happily through the week. And then on Saturdays, they go to recover their things using the money they've earned. I had no idea. This has been a fascinating lesson for us. Everyone does it, you see, especially people in inner London. And should they have money to spare, they would purchase another fine jacket. Not to wear, obviously, but to the pawn, should the need arise. Oh, how ingenious! So whenever we have something that's getting in the way, we leave it at Windybanks, you see. A pawnbroker can be thought of as an extremely secure vault. Who would have thought that even pawnbrokers are different here in Great Britain? Of course, you have to watch early with it. Sometimes he pawns things he really shouldn't. Don't you, Hurley? What does it matter? The world is dead to me now. Oh, what was that? Vagahai? What was that? Oh no! Bagahai's tangled up in your violin! I think he... Th I think he thinks it's a toy! No, what's he doing to it? Oh dear! Mr. Sholm's precious violin! Why should I care? What? I shouldn't be surprised. If the cat is a more accomplished musician than I now. Mr. Sean really is in poor spirits, isn't he? Well, anyway, I'll put it back where it lives. Shall I, Hurley? Out of the cat's reach, if possible. Maybe we should assess the damage. So we are supposed to assess the damage, huh? We're gonna do that, of course. So this is the violin, is it? It's a Stradivarius. One of the finest violins in the world. Made by the renowned Italian luthier Antonio Stradivari. Oh, I, I see. It doesn't really look like anything special to me. I happened upon it covered in dust, languishing in a pawn shop down a nondescript non back alley. 
The broker had no idea of its value, so was able to purchase it for a mere 55 shillings. That is incredibly cheap. If you don't know guys, Stradivari violins are very pricey. They're super expensive and very rare. And if you're a professional violinist, you want to have you want to get a hold of one of those things. You do want to, and that is why they're extremely expensive. 55 shillings. I don't know how much that is, but I guess it's very cheap. How honorable of you. And until today, it has been my faithful companion in every great Paganini-inspired performance I have made. I ask you, is there reason to live in a world devoid of music to tolerate this blanched existence? No! There is none! Um, Mr. Sholmes? What, dear madam, what? My thoughts are preoccupied with fancies of release from this dull routine. Well, it's about the violin. It looks very different to normal, don't you think? Huh? What do you mean, Miss Susato? Oh, Susie's right! Yes, the tone of the word is completely different. And that's not all. I'm sure there was no crack there before. Wait, it's not even the right size, is it? What's this? I'm terribly sorry to have to tell you this, Mr. Sholmes, but that instrument isn't a violin at all. Then what? I believe it's an entirely different instrument called a viola. What? 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 Oh, Mr. Sholmes, are you alright? You're right! You are quite right! This isn't my faithful Stradivarius! So, what? Pray, is this piece of string of flotsam? Not your faithful performing partner, then. Oh, I see what must have happened. You do, Iris? This is just a simple mix-up. It sounds like Iris might be able to tell us exactly what's happened if we ask her. So that means we have to examine here once again. And ask her. But I'm sorry guys, we have not just reached the half hour mark, we have passed it quite significantly. So, I'm going to call it quits for this episode of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. If you want to know what the mix-up is, you'll have to tune in next time. See you then.